Hello and welcome back and that is right today it's time for another PS5 heatsink test. A number of you have been looking at buying an SSD upgrade for your PS5 and after that you've been thinking oh I should probably get myself a heatsink because those things get really really hot and for some reason people seem to think that $10 is too much and they shouldn't get a heatsink and those people really annoy me. So the people that are looking at getting a heatsink for their SSD, you know the smart ones, have been looking at getting PS5 heatsinks that are designed for the system and two of the ones that have slowly started bubbling to the top have been these two. This here, when the light isn't going nuts, is the Sabrint PS5 designed heatsink and this is the more recently released PNY XLR8 PS5 heatsink. There's been a number of other heatsinks that I've talked about here on the channel. I've talked about the Elect gear at times. I've talked about the Eno over there. I've even talked about that horrible Eagle thing as well. Um, but these two are ones that have garnered the most interest because they seem to be a very interesting middle between being um, a larger heat sink and larger heat dissipation panel while still being less aggressive and kind of you know invasive into the inside of the PS5 system. For example, if we have a good look at the Sabrent there, we can have a look at the Sabrent. This was released uh, depending on where you are in the world for availability, September or October of 2021. Again, this fills the entire PS5 M2 SSD slot. Again, it has a heat dissipation panel there on the base. It's ridged all the way along the top for air when it's passing through the fans of the system to brush through. And it replaces that little M2 um, metal plate that the PS5 has inside that covers the SSD storage slot there. Now we've done temp tests on this already, but we've not compared it against this. The more recently released PNY SSD, something I found it recently stands for Paris, New York, and not purple, not yellow, which I really hoped it would be. If you watched that video, thanks for being one of us. Now, this heat dissipation panel here, we can see the XLR8 looks a lot more kind of gamer focused there it's a lot sharper there in the design um the ventilation there if we look it's not ridged there on the top it's a completely flat metal panel and it's actually got holes all the way through at the base there i don't know how well you can make that out in the light and the air is captured through that cooling the metal plate underneath a larger metal plate there at the bottom and it arrives with the heat dissipation panels there on the base and also screws in it's also thicker it has to be said as well Indeed, if you try to use the PS5's own screw to attach this inside at the top there, it barely connects. It actually includes an additional screw because the top of it is deeper as well. Now, in today's video, we're looking at um, uh, several things. We're looking at heat dissipation. So in other words, the SSD that's going to be inside for this testing, this is the XLR8. So again, we are using PNY's own SSD for both of these heat sinks. We're checking the temperature of the controller, which is the brain to that SSD. We're seeing what temperature it reaches during heavy read activity, heavy write activity, and gameplay on Demon Souls and the Matrix Unreal 5 tech engine. Um, and we're going to be looking at that controller and how high it gets to over a period of time when we speed up that recorded footage while we have a temperature sensing it. But what we're also looking at is the internal cooling of the PS5. So, as you can see in there, I've already applied a heat dissipation panel. That's where the SSD is up there. You could ignore that panel. There's those fans circling around the bottom. And what happens is, air, when this system is activated, is passing through the front of the system, is then circulated in those internal fans and pushed out the back. It uses a system known as negative pressure, where it pulls that air in and pushes it out the back. And the air cools the CPU, GPU, memory, and overall components inside the PS5 system. Now... What's important is we want to make sure that we can measure how hot these heat sinks make the internal system. And by that, I mean normally this has a metal panel covering it, this SSD, when you use a modicum little tiny little L10 heat sink like that. But with these, these are designed to live outside of this just enough that it will capture the airflow passing through. And therefore, as this plate is drawing heat out of the SSD's controller and the other components, it is then freed up into the air by the active airflow passing over and through the heat sink. So our second node that we measure with our temperature sensor is based here. And what we're basing here outside is the ambient temperature of the PS5 when it's in operation. 
So the result is we want to see during all of our testing what is the heat of the SSD and what is the heat of the overall system temperature and therefore have an understanding ultimately of which one of these does a better job at different tasks. And at the end of the video we'll summarize what we've seen and ultimately hopefully help you decide which one of these you should go for because remember both of these are available in bundles as well. That means you can buy them on their own for approximately the same price. I believe the Sabrent is now down at $20. The PMY is still knocking around for $25 to $35, depending on where you shop around. So it's definitely the more expensive. Um, but both of these can be bundled and purchased with a 1, a 2 uh, TB SSD. And in the case of the Sabrent, even a 4 TB SSD. And with those, you either get the heat sink at an incredibly reduced price or ultimately included as an as a free extra so there's motivation if you're already looking at a sabrent or a pmy ssd but this is enough chat let's make our way into the testing and go through each of those tests and at the end summarize what we learned so for our first test we wanted to conduct a heavy write operation while we move over 360 gigabytes of data from the internal ps5 ssd onto the ssds underneath the pny and sabrent ssd heat sinks so the pny started 18.7 with the sabrent starting at 25.4 a noticeable increase in difference there but again you have to take ambient temperature into the fold they re ended up increasing quite a different amount in between them. And if we look at the PMY, closing in towards the end, um, it ends at 26 degrees on the nose, with the Sabrent increasing up to 30.2 degrees. But you have to factor in the different starting temperatures. That said, overall, the PMY increased the overall temperature at the controller at 7.3 degrees and the Sabrent 4.8 degrees, meaning the Sabrent overall, although starting higher, resulted in a smaller increase over time. For our next test, we decided to use Demon Souls, the PS5 remake. At the beginning here, if you look at the PNY and the Sabrent at the top of the screen, you can see that the controller temperatures on both of them started quite differently, around about 5 degrees of difference between them. The Sabrent definitely had a little bit more difficulty dissipating the heat in some of these earlier tests. Now, at the bottom of the screen, you can see the ambient temperature there. That is the second node next to the fan of the PS5, indicating if there was any impact of these SSD heat sinks on the overall ambient system temperature. Now, as you can see, when it comes to the controller temperature at the top, the PNY there is still staying underneath the 30. Indeed, it ends at around about 29.9 degrees at the end, an increase overall throughout the test of 4.1 degrees on the controller. The Sabrent started at 31.2 and ended at 33.8, an overall temperature increase of just 2.6 degrees, although higher overall. Now, in terms of the ambient air temperature, we saw a slight difference there. Starting at 24.5 and ending at 25.5, the PNY heatsink increased the ambient temperature throughout this test at simply 1 degree, whereas the Sabrent, starting at 23 degrees and ending at 27.4, resulted in a 4.4 degree increase and overall resulting in the tiniest higher impact on the overall ambient system temperature throughout that test. Overall, I'd call that a bit of a draw. Next, I looked at using the Unreal Engine 5 tech demo partnered with the Matrix. Now, once again, both of these started at different starting temperatures on the controller, but not as different as before, with the PNY starting at 27.9 and the Sabrent starting at 28.1 there on the controllers at the top of the screen. Whereas ambient temperatures were very, very close indeed by comparison, both at 27 degrees, but the Sabrent at 27.6. Now, throughout the test, what we saw when these were running was much closer numbers than we've seen previously. The PNY and the Sabrent throughout the Matrix tech demo, in the case of the controller and the ambient temperature outside of the heatsink, were actually quite similar in their overall outlook, with decimal place degrees difference in the air temperature, but a little bit more on the controller. If you look at the top there, the PNY will eventually end this gameplay session at 35.1 degrees overall, an increase of 7.2 degrees. The Sabrent entered things at 33.3 degrees, actually lower than the PNY this time for the controller, a result of 5.2 degrees increase overall. Now, with the ambient air temperature, the numbers were a great deal closer, with the PMY ending at around 28.5 degrees and the Sabrent ending at 29.5 degrees. That's 1.5 and 1.9 degrees respectively between them. Too close to call, but overall, the Sabrent won this round. 
And finally we started the process of moving these games back onto the PS5's internal SSD there. Now what's intriguing here is although both of them uh, up until this point have been quite comparable, this is where we saw a slight difference between them grow over time. The PNY starting at 25.2 and the Sabrent starting at 29 clearly indicated that in the small amount of downtime we gave it between the tests, the Sabrent wasn't getting rid of the heat as well as the PNY over time. Now, Throughout this uh, transfer of this data, it took around 24 minutes. By the end of it, the PMY ends things at 29.5 and the Sabrent ends things at 29.9. So very similar indeed between the two of them, but by the end, the PMY had increased up to 4.3 degrees and the Sabrent just 0.9. And remember, they're both using that PMY SSD. And ultimately, I think that's another factor we have to bear in mind. These two are so similar, it makes it very hard to choose. So, what did we learn? Well, let's be realistic about this. The actual temperature dif difference between these two SSDs was actually really small. In the grand scheme of things, if you were to look at these figures as standalone, as of the, you know, as of themselves, there's really nothing in it. One or two degrees when you already have changing ambient temperatures in any given room and day of the week of the month of the year, alongside different SSDs that you're going to be utilizing, all having different overall temperatures. For example, a WD Black does run a little hotter than some of the Fires on E18 SSDs out there generally of itself. The differences between them are very minimal. Yes, they started at different temperatures. It has to be highlighted. But a lot of the time, what we tried to look at wasn't the temperature it started with. It was about how much it changed from the start to the end. That figure in between, the actual difference. Because then you can measure something about the heat that was um, dissipated throughout both of these. Now, in terms of overall system decretion, it has to be said that between the two of them, the one that decreased the SSD's temperature the, the most was the PMY. The PMY in pretty much overall on point when we looked at each of our different tests side by side we saw the PMY SSD was the one that dissipated the most heat. Uh, I, uh, in other words the SSD was maintained at a lower temperature increase overall throughout our testing with the PMY. However it's also worth highlighting between tests and with power down which is very hard to demonstrate on the recordings. The Sabrent cooled down a lot quicker now whether you could say that's because of um it's the amount of heat it dissipated in the first place i'm not sure but i will say the sabrent between sessions dissipated the heat from its metal enclosure a lot quicker now when it came to ambient airflow we didn't see a vast amount of difference and, and it ultimately came as a draw it looked at the beginning like the pny was dissipating heat um, more efficiently in the PS5 system. In other words, the PS5's internal ambient temperature seemed to increase the least between the two of them. But then things started changing when we went to the more aggressive activities on the system there. So I can't really give one SSD an advantage over the other in terms of the ambient PS5 system. I will say they both had little or no impact on the overall system core temperature when they were in operation, especially compared to the Elect gear, because the Elect gear was the one that seemed to generate a lot more ambient system temperature, because it lived outside that bay a great deal more, and therefore it warmed up the air that little bit more as it passed through the PS5's cooling. But if you were to really put a gun to my head, I think it would be tough to choose between these two, because they're both great heat sinks. Um, if you are looking at the best heat sink for the price, if you know, if you've already spent, you've already thwacked down a lot of money on a two or four TB SSD, the Sabrent is probably the better choice for you because it does arrive noticeably cheaper and it's been on the market longer as well. So they can be a lot more flexible with that pricing. If you wanted to really, really break it down to points which one dissipated the most heat, I would say the PMY. But bear in mind, the advantage it had was incredibly negate uh, like incredibly tiny and negotiable enough that i would not quite say it was worth spending potentially another 10 to 15 pounds on again if you're an active gamer or using gaming you know your ps5 five six seven hours a day you use it a lot you're an esports you're using capture for a youtube channel or something then you will see that difference there you will enjoy that difference as well of sustained activity on this if you don't hit those sort of numbers the Sabrent is still an incredible SSD and this uh, SSD heatsink and its ability to dissipate heat is unquestioned. It's already 
beaten down a lot of its competition. And now the price has come down lower, it makes it one of the most attractive PS5 SSD heat sinks out there. Um, the only closing statement I would say, and again, I touched on this in the introduction, if you're already looking at buying a Sabrent SSD or the PMY, and by that I mean the Rocket 4 Plus or the PMY XLRA uh, CS3140, if you're already on, you know, on the, uh, you know, on your way to buying those SSDs, buy their own SSD heatsink because one, you'll get a better price overall, and two, when we utilise these in our PS5 system, they seem to work great with um, these SSDs that can run quite hot, and the fires on the E18, although it is a widespread controller, it still gets quite, quite hot. So if you're already looking at getting those SSDs, get their own respective heat sinks, because their own respective heat sinks do a damn fine job. And right now, these are well the score to beat for me when it comes to a heat sink for your PS5. Again, it depends on your utility, which one you should go for. I've already given you a bunch of factors, but this has been comparing the PNY XLR8 PS5 heatsink versus the Sabren PS5 heatsink. Both PS5 designed, both working great in that system. If you want to learn more, click subscribe as we go through this subject more and more as it evolves over time. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. It helps me understand what I'm doing right and makes each video better than the last. And do take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares, linked in the description to help you with choosing the right storage solution, not only for your PS5, but for backups, for NAS, for DAS, for Thunderbolt, for anything. If you're going to put a question in the comments, I, I love that you guys put questions in the comments, but it makes it incredibly hard to answer them and re-answer them. The best and most efficient way for me and Eddie the web guy to answer everyone's inquiries is to use the free advice section linked in the description. It's completely free. We don't do anything with your email. Couldn't give a stuff about your email. Um, and there's donate buttons. Use them, ignore them. It's up to you. We answer as many as we can, and we generally answer in a day or so because we got lives, but we always try. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.